Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out another game from the Asylum Game Jam. This is Beneath by developer Armchair Conquistadors. Um, it's, you know, there's still a few more days left in October. I figured it would be kind of a good idea to do a few more uh, relatively spooky games. I'm not sure to what degree this one's going to hold up that, but there is something... Uh, kind of cool about this game, and I think it's definitely worth showing off. It is free, by the way, as well. So why don't we just jump into things, and we'll figure things out as we go. There are a couple of instructions here by the credits in the corner. Uh, mouse to aim, run, hold shift, focus light, left click, movement, WASD, uh, flashlight on or off of the F key, and a drop item is space. So those are things to keep in mind. Let's play Beneath. Here we go. Alright, find 10 batteries, bring them back to the start. Remember, you are slowed down if you carry too much. Okay, so we've got to get the batteries, bring them back to the beginning, wherever that is, and see how things go. So here we are. It's a top-down perspective. We've got our main character here who turns around in circles based on where I have my mouse pointer set up. I can also hit left-click to focus the beam of the flashlight, and there we go. We've got a battery, so now we can bring it back, and we've got zero items in our inventory, so that's been dropped. Uh, items left are nine, so I'm not sure if this game is randomly generated or not. Uh, you know, I did do a run real quickly while I was getting my sound levels checked. I can't really tell if... I mean, honestly, the level seems a little bit, uh, you know, sort of repetitive in the design of it, because it's the same floor every single time, the same walls and everything, so it's a little tough to tell. But you'd think the layouts would be a little bit more obvious, right? But yet, you know, I'm kind of silly and I can't really tell. Um, so the big thing about this game that first comes to my mind is, wow, it's like we're playing, like, Teleglitch or Hotline Miami, but it's a horror game. And that's kind of a cool idea, and I kind of like that idea. Uh, it also is a really nice idea, and I think this is probably the coolest thing that this game has going for right now, is the fact that the walls... Uh, actually light up and stay lit up for a certain amount of time once you pass your flashlight over them. So that gives you uh, a reason to, you know, walk around and try and be a little bit meticulous and look at everything. The only thing that's a bit of a downside that I can tell is that the, uh, the light does not stay on permanently. If we stay here and we watch, uh, the light behind us will slowly fade back to zero. So unfortunately we aren't able to just, like, make ourselves a map out of the situation, which is uh, probably what I would find to be preferable. I think we've just run over a battery as his item in inventory one. Uh, and of course we are being pursued because, you know, we're always being pursued in horror games uh, by some sort of unknown entity. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Uh, I encountered it one time in the few seconds I got to play it and, uh, you know, I instantly died. I had no idea what it even was. I didn't get a good look at it. Uh, which is one of the things that I say, uh, probably a little bit of a critique or a criticism in this case. Uh, the sense of momentum that you have, and yes, I can be running a little bit faster, so I should be doing that. Uh, the sense of momentum when you go around corners is a little awkward sometimes, because honestly, look at the view range you have. I mean, you can only see, like, three or four feet in front of you as your character. Uh, so if you're going to run into an enemy, uh, it's going to probably just kill you. I mean, if it's a one-hit kill deal, which I believe it is here. Unless I'm just particularly uh, not that observant and somehow managed to get through that. Anyway, I'm sure we will run into it at some point. I have no way of knowing where it's going to be. I don't think there's any kind of a cue letting you know that you're about to run into it, but it's probably a good reason not to just hold down the shift button for the entirety of the game. I mean, obviously as tempting as that would be uh, to try and outrun the darkness by, you know, running around, you know, you're going to maybe get the objectives done a little bit faster, but the dude's going to probably crash into you, and that's uh, not what you want, because it's really going to just cost you time in the end might be okay to run back if we can see the uh, environment around us. Now, it said we had to press space to drop items. I guess we could do that if we were trying to, like, chain our way back to the beginning or, like, maybe use the batteries as some sort of a, you know, a place marker, which there isn't really... Well, game over, apparently. So I guess that kind of illustrates what I was talking about. Uh, evidently, there was the enemy there. Uh, I had no way of knowing, however, and uh, instantly was killed by it. So I didn't even get a look at it to see what it looked like at all. It just basically just flashed an instant death screen. So let's see if we can tell if this uh, environment looks the same as last time. See, it's like, it's really hard to just remember for some reason, even though it shouldn't be. Uh, it just sort of looks similar. It looks a little bit like it was before. Now that would be a thing that I would love to see uh, mixed up a little bit, is if we could perhaps have a few different uh, themes or motifs, or if you... Uh, Oh, I guess the enemy's here. Yeah, there it is. I don't know what that is, but I guess we'll just walk backwards for a second. 
Uh, and we do actually have some music, so that's good. There is something to give us a cue that we're being pursued. But if there was, uh, you know, some identifying landmark features that would help us with identifying where we are in the, uh, the facility or whatever we're calling this thing, I think that would go a long way to being able to read the environment better and maybe not feel quite as lost, which I know you want that feeling of desperation a little bit. There, walk right into him again. Uh, but in this case, I think it would probably serve the player a little bit better to at least have a, a basic understanding of what structure or what part of the structure you're in. So let's see if the uh, generation is the same for the monster as well, now that it seems like the geometry for the world is actually the same. Uh, from what I can tell, we go over here, there's always going to be this little nugget on this side that's a dead end. Should be another nugget on this side that's a dead end. And then we go down and right, and then there's an open area, which is where I found the monster before. Okay, looks like not this time, though. Uh, also, I gotta keep in mind my flashlight focus power is set to, uh, there's 88 of it right now, and if I keep using it to try and see ahead of me, I'm going to eventually run out of that. Now, I understand that makes sense from, like, a resource management position, but, uh, as well as that being kind of a- oh, okay, I guess we're dead again. Uh, the flashlight, it's, you know, it's a nice thing to, uh, have to establish a little bit of tension in the atmosphere, but at the same time, I feel like it should probably come back, uh, even if it's a bit of a slow crawl, uh, because you're just basically burning up a resource that might actually be absolutely necessary to see where you're going, and not just crash straight into that enemy. Now, on the ambience front, I have to give the developers credit where credit is due. I think the, uh, the soundtrack that goes along with this uh, particularly menacing. I think it does a good job of putting you in the right place. Uh, we've got a lot of this very... Oh, there is the enemy. I still can't tell what the thing is. Oh, and it speeds up, too. I don't know. It looks like some kind of weird crab or something. Uh, but when you get the, uh, the chase scene moment, I think things are definitely particularly, uh, you know, tense, I guess is really the only word. Uh, you get that sense of you know, and there's an emergency runaway, and then usually you just die almost instantly, so that, you know, the tension is short-lived, I guess we'll say. Now, I have never beaten this. I don't know where all the batteries are going to be. Uh, in fact, the first time when I was doing this just to get my sound levels, I didn't even realize I wanted to drop off the batteries each time, uh, which seems like uh, would make this somewhat arduous, because there's ten of these things. And, you know, walking back and forth in this facility over and over again, since it looks largely the same and all the walls disappear, well, until you either make yourself a map for it, or you memorize it, uh, you're gonna eventually kind of get bored of walking through the same shapes and corridors. So, you know, mixing it up a little bit might be a good idea, or might be a nice idea anyway. Uh, maybe you could add some, like, ventilation shafts or something you could hide in the corner from. Or, you know, if you want to take, a, like, a lone survivor perspective on things, maybe add a little bit of minor combat. Uh, although I guess it would really, you know, end up turning out a lot like Hotline Miami, but horror-themed. I mean, you know, there's nothing really wrong with that either. Like I said at the beginning, I kind of think that's a cool thing. Uh, but then again, you know, I guess you do want to sort of differentiate yourself a little bit. Um, I could also see maybe where there could be a couple of uh, moments where you could have light occasionally pop on for a second. Uh, to give you some perspective on where you might be on the map, or uh, maybe something particularly scary could happen. Maybe there could be a little bit of an event-driven moment or two. You know, sequencing and scripting usually go uh, very well hand-in-hand -hand with horror games, and in this case, you're kind of just left to your own devices, and, you know, you just wander around, see what happens. And there's nothing really wrong with that. It definitely does make you feel like you're a bit more alone, since it feels like you're really in control of what's going on. Uh, however, if you just end up walking straight into the enemy, well, it kind of takes you a little bit out of things. Oh, see? Just like that. I also wanted to point out one last thing. I think we're going to probably wrap this up in just a moment here. Uh, another nice little detail. If you notice, the edges of the corners there will actually uh, bend the shadows as you walk around. So I, I think that's a nice thing, and it definitely also adds to the sense of atmosphere as well. Uh, the fact that your light could actually be obfuscated by edges... Uh, you know, it puts you a little bit more in, like, a physical space, which is something that we definitely would want. Um, I could also see where it might be appealing to maybe have, you know, some furniture you could knock into, a couple of physics-driven objects just to mix things up. 
Uh, that way, you know, you get little mini scares along the way. It's not always necessarily going to instantly kill you, uh, but there could be a couple things in the environment to, to deal around with or mess around with. Uh, you might even get into, like, minor physics-driven puzzles, and I don't mean puzzles in really much of a pure sense, but just the ability to, like, push a box in the way of something, although then that does open up a world of exploits for blocking the AI of the uh, enemy. Although I guess when you're dealing with possibly supernatural combatants, I guess really uh, doesn't matter if there's an object in the way, maybe they just go right through it. Or maybe they just cause the object to be destroyed and then it's unusable. I mean, there's a lot of ways you could kind of get through that. Uh, but let's also keep in mind this was designed for a game jam. I'm not sure what the time constraints were, but they probably weren't particularly long. So, you know, the amount of the game that's implemented... Uh, is probably reflective of that amount of time. You know, also, uh, the fact that the character has a very small amount of ambient light being cast from them, a good call. I think maybe I would have made that a little larger, honestly, uh, and the flashlight radius a little bit larger by default, uh, and also possibly made the character move a little bit faster at default speed. But like I said, there's some reasons why you might want to keep uh, those things separated a little bit, and, you know, you probably do want to go fairly slow so you don't crash into the enemy, and I understand that, but... You know, if you could see a little further, maybe that wouldn't be such a big deal. I could also see stamina management factoring in, but this is all well-tread territory when it comes to horror games. I think we've all played, you know, a fair share of them by now, hopefully, uh, to have a good degree of an idea about what things usually do and don't work in this sort of a formula. Uh, and it's a lot of tweaking, it's a lot of balancing. And, you know, this game does get some things right, and again, I think really the strongest thing is really going to be uh, that wall fading mechanic. The fact that you can see the edges based on what you shine your light on is really kind of cool to me. Uh, and does have some good implications for where this could go if it was developed further into a, a more robust game offering. But with that, I don't expect that I'm going to find all the batteries in this run. I would love to see... yeah, there we go. Dude just shows up right in front of the exit. Classic horror game. So yeah, if you guys want to see what you could do with this one, feel free to let me know. Uh, how successful or unsuccessful you were. Let me know what your opinions are, of course, as well. Uh, the link to play it is going to be right in the description, so browse on over. It is free again. It is a web uh, player game, so you do need, you know, Unity web player for that. But I think it's a pretty cool idea. Uh, probably just uh, maybe needs to be implemented into some larger structures, but so far so good. So for a game jam, I say good effort. I enjoyed it. And uh, again, would love to hear what you think about it. So, you know, give it a try uh, while you're in the description. Also, feel free to stop by my other social media links like my Twitter, my Facebook, or Indie-Impressions.com if you want to see uh, well over 550 other games that I've covered in the series. Uh, they're all sorted and categorized, so, you know, feel free to browse around, see what you can find. Hopefully there's something for pretty much everyone. And that is going to do it pretty much for another day, so I hope you'll come back again tomorrow. New episodes are every single day. Still haven't missed a day, despite the, uh, the somewhat controversy about the further episode, which actually just didn't show up properly in the sequence of events. But I didn't miss one, so, you know, there we go. Now you know. Uh, but that is going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you back again tomorrow for a super spooky episode. Take care, guys. Later.